Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this really cute little skunk cake for all my anti-Valentiners out there. This video is a collab with Mark over at Epic Confections. Don't forget to check out his video, I'm going to have it linked down below. I'm starting out with his body and I have some black fondant here and I'm rolling that into this long teardrop shape. I've added some Tylos powder to my fondant because I want the body especially to be really firm so the weight of the head doesn't smush it down. With another ball of fondant, I'm flattening that against my work surface and then I'm shaping that with my hand so that the bottoms are just a little bit pointed. With my X-Acto knife, I'm cutting in on either side three times to create just these little triangles. It's just giving me like a little tuft of fur right at the bottom. And then I'm using my fondant tools and my fingers just to shape them a little bit more so they're not sticking straight out, they're kind of curved a little bit. Using my balling tool, I'm marking in some eye sockets just a little over halfway down. and then filling each of those with an ovaly type shape of dark gray fondant. With my smaller balling tool, I'm indenting two circles into that gray fondant and then filling those with two balls of black fondant. I'm rolling out some white fondant and then I just eyeballed this shape. I want the white to go down the center of his nose. So once I just roughly cut that out, I placed it over the head and with my fingers and my fondant tools, I'm just kind of mushing it into the shape that I want and making sure it's really flat and I'm going over all of the edges as well to make sure that they're flush with the head. Once I was happy with the shape, I just trimmed away the excess using my pizza cutter. I rolled out two small balls of white fondant and just added those into either eye for the catch light. With more of that dark gray fondant, I shaped this little triangle and put that right where the white meets the black. I know it's hard to see because the black doesn't show up really great on my camera, but I just took my fondant tool and marked in a little mouth. With more of my white fondant, I made two little teeny tiny teardrop shapes, and I'm just adding those to the top for like a little fluff of fur. For the ears, I took two balls of black fondant, smushed them against my work surface, indented the middle with my balling tool, and then just trimmed off the excess at the bottom. My fondant was holding in place just fine without any water or shortening, but if you find that anything's coming loose, you can go ahead and add a little bit of that before you add each piece. So this is the face done, and before we move on, let's have a quick boo out Mark is doing over on his channel. That's my ex-boyfriend Charlie. He broke my heart. I broke him. So I already have my cake iced and covered in fondant and if you need to see how to do those steps, I'll link those videos down below. So I positioned the body on the cake. Unfortunately, my camera stopped filming while I was adding the little white tummy, but you can just get the general idea of the shape I cut out and pressed against the front. When I was happy with the placement, I'm pushing two skewers right to the bottom of the cake, making sure there's enough coming out the top to support the head. Because the head is going to be so heavy, I am using two skewers. If this was like a regular figurine, I would just use one. With the same light pink I used for the cake, I'm rolling that out and then cutting out a heart. And I let this dry for about a half hour before I started to write on it. Now I have total chicken scratch. So hopefully you can make yours a little bit neater than mine. I just used a fine tip paintbrush and a little bit of black food coloring gel. You could also use a edible food marker if you'd like. I carefully placed that right on the front, not too low, not too high, just where his arms are gonna be sitting. I've rolled out a black snakey of fondant. 
and then I'm mushing one end down so it's a little bit bigger. And then with my X-Acto knife, I'm marking in three lines. I made two of those and I'm arranging them on either side, just making sure that each hand is coming down so it looks like he's holding the heart in place. Now I'm going to carefully add the head. It's been sitting for about an hour and a half now, so it has firmed up. It's not too soft, but I'm still being very careful as I'm gently pressing it down. For each of his feet, I have an oval of black fondant, and then I just added one larger circle of pink for the bottom and three for the top for his little jelly bean toes. To make his tail, I'm rolling out a large piece of black fondant into this long cylinder shape and then just tapering one end of that down, not too thin. I want this overall to be pretty thick. Next I'm rolling out a smaller snaky of white fondant and I'm going to place that right in the middle and just gently press it down to flatten it with my palm. I'm rolling the whole thing together so it looks more cohesive and like there isn't a big gap between the white and the black. Just being sure to go back in and reshape the edges of that white strip because I don't want it to be all misshapen and wobbly looking. While my fondant was still pliable, I'm curling the top over onto itself so you just can't see the white peeking through anymore. It was a little bit too long so I cut off some of the excess at the bottom and then inserting a skewer all the way through, not poking out through the top but pretty close to the top. I let this dry completely before I added it to my cake because it is a little bit heavy. You don't want to do it what's too soft because it's just going to slowly flop over and I just stuck that right behind him. To finish off my cake, I've rolled out some black fondant and I got some different size cutters here and I'm punching out a bunch of hearts. I'm trailing those up the front of the cake, kind of going from smallest to largest. Just to fill in any gaps, I also added a couple dots of black food coloring on the end of my fine tipped fondant tool. And this was a final result guys. I think this little guy turned out super cute. I'm so happy with how the cake looks. I hope you like it as well. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you do like it and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. It really helps me out. Don't forget to check out Mark's video. I'm going to have all his info linked down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.